Okay, uh, in this question, okay, we are going to look at this worksheet. Okay, so I'm going to uh, read out the question with you. Acacia Academy Tuition Centre provides tuition services for students at the secondary school. Okay, the business provided the following information for the year ended 31st March 2019. Now, the first thing that you have to know when you do this type of questions is this. Every question is going to start by telling you what is the financial year end. And the financial year end is 31st March 2019. Now, why is this important? Because if they tell you the financial year end is 31st of March, you need to know what is the financial start of the year. What is the financial beginning? What is the beginning? Okay? Now, not all questions will tell you this. Most of the questions will. But just to let you know, if your financial year ends on 31st March 2019, it means that your financial year started on 1st April 2018. Now, how do, you, how do you do that, okay? One very easy way is this. Uh, if you are at 31st of March, just tell me what is the next day, and then minus one for the year. Okay? So what is the next day after 31st March? 1st of April. And then for the year, minus one. That's why you get 1st of April, 2018. Okay, the only way, the only dates that will, this method will not work, right, is when your financial year ends on 31st December. Then I think this one is quite straightforward, right? If it ends on 31st December, means the year started on 1st of January, okay? In the same year, okay? Now, let's read on. Your tuition fee income receivable is 2,500 at the start. And your tuition fee income received in advance is 4,000 at the end. Okay? Now, then they ask you, during the year, checks of 8900, okay? This one, I need you all to highlight and cash of 5,000 were received as tuition fee income. So far, okay? Now, let me uh, draw out a timeline to explain to you what is going on in this question. start of your financial year, your financial year ends on 31st March 2019, which means that this is your current financial year. This is now. This is this year. Okay? Now, if this is the current financial year, what do we call this part? The previous, right? Okay? So the previous Financial year. Okay? And if this is the previous financial year, this is the current one. So this one is the next financial year. Okay? Now, uh, this timeline will be very important for you to understand what are all these numbers and what are all these accounts at the beginning and the end stands for. Okay? Now, let's start from here. First, when you are here, okay, you have a tuition fee receivable of 2500. You can draw this timeline on your worksheet. Okay? Now, if you have a tuition fee receivable at 25, uh, of 2500 at the start of the financial year, let me ask you this question. According to your accrual basis of accounting, we don't care whether you, when you receive this money or not, okay? We don't care about the money. But we care about when did it occur. So when was the goods and services delivered? Was it the previous year or was it this year? Think about it. What is receivable? Receivable means customer owe you money, correct? Customer owe you money, correct? So if customer owe you money, does that mean that you have already given the goods? Or does it mean that you haven't given the goods? Think about it. Give already, yes. And why give already? Let's just think it very logically. If, think, uh, think along with me, if, the, if you haven't given your customer the product, the goods and services here, why did your customer owe you money then? You understand? 
if you haven't provided it here, why would your customer owe you money here? Okay, receivable is your customer owing you money. Okay, this means that your credit customer owes you 2500. And if at the start of the year they owe you money, it must mean that you have provided it here. Okay, so for this 2500, when did the business earn this 2500? You earn it here. Yes, the business has provided the tuition services uh, in the previous year. Do you understand how I understand this? Okay, so I say again, at the start of the year, your customer, at the start of this year, at the start of the year, your customer owe you money. How can the customer owe you money at the start of the year? It means that you provided the tuition services the previous year. Right? If the tuition services are not provided at the previous year, why your customer owe you money at the start of the year? You haven't even started your year yet. Right? Your customer will not owe you anything. Why did your customer owe you money? Because you've given him or her something. In this case, the patient is a tuition academy, means that you've provided the tuition services the previous year already. Everyone clear so far? Okay. Now, let's move on to the next one. Now we are at the end of the year. Now, this is the end of the year. We have this thing called tuition fee received in advance. Okay, I'm going to write RIA because I don't want to spell out uh, uh, received in advance all the time. Okay. Now, think with me. If receivable means your customer owe you money, what is received in advance? We owe customer what? Services. Okay, we don't owe customer money. Uh. Okay, we all customer services now. If you, at the end of this year, at the end of this year, you owe your customer the services, when will you give that service? When will you give the customer that service? Next. You understand? Not? Okay, if you have a receipt advance, it means that the business will provide the tuition services in the next financial year. The services will only be provided in the next financial year. So, what, what is this receipt in advance about? It just means that this year, we never give the tuition, ah, but this year, we receive 4,000. But we never give the tuition yet. The tuition will only be given in the next year. Okay, so why is it received in advance? Because we receive the 4,000 in advance. We owe the customer that service. Okay? Okay, cut. If you have a tuition fee income receivable of 2500 at the start of this year, okay, this means that you did not earn it this year. You earn it in the previous year. Now, I don't care whether it's the previous year or the next year, as long as it's not this year, you have to minus my income. So why did I debit income? Because debit income means minus income. Okay, I know it's a bit counterintuitive right now, but just remember, this income, this 2500, don't belong this year. It don't belong to this year. Where does it belong to? It belongs to the previous year. That's why I debit away the income. Now, a lot of people say, oh, so I know that it didn't happen this year, it happened in the previous year. But what, why, why does that mean that you have to minus the income? Why, why do you have to minus the income? Now, you have to minus the income because of these two highlighted part, which I'm going to go through now. Okay, now, because of the checks and the cash, you will record these things. And I think this one, no one should have any problems. Now, what is going on here? If you receive checks of 8900, just debit, cash at bank, 89000. And then credit, tuition fee income. Why? Because you are receiving the checks as tuition fee income. So you credit income, right? And for the cash, if they say cash, okay, so you write debit, cash in hand, 5000. And what do you credit? Why are you receiving the money? 
we are receiving it because of fusion T income. Now this is the part where I want to explain a bit, but let me give you some time to copy down. Okay, stop. If at the start you have fusion T receivable, it means that the services have been provided the previous year. This one we concluded already, right? Now, let me ask you, if you have a tuition fee receivable at the start of the year, when will you get back the money? Maybe this year or next year. Very good. Okay, but everyone understand, right? You, you, if you have a tuition fee receivable, you provide the services here already, you can only receive the money here or here, right? Can you receive it here? No, la. if you receive it here, why would you even have a receivable to start with, right? So it makes sense, right? So you must receive the money either this year or next year. Now, normally in POA, we will assume that if you have a receivable, the services provided in this year, the next year you will get back the money already. Okay, so where will we get back the money? We will get back the money here. For this receivable, this 2500, we earn it last year, we will receive the money this year. Everyone clear so far? Now, this 2500 that you receive this year, can you see that 2500 is inside these two things? Do you realize this? Okay, this 2500 that you will receive this year is inside these two things. Now, inside where? I don't care. I don't care about the money. But the thing is, this money that you receive, 2500 is inside, right? This money that you receive, did you earn the income this year? This 2500, did you earn it this year? No, you earn it in the previous year. Do you understand now why I must minus the income? See, uh, when I receive the money, I will plus this two income. But I know that this money, this total money that I receive, inside, there is 2500 that I never earned this year. That's why I know this, that's why I minus the income. This two, when I receive the money, I plus the income. That, but because of this 2500 that I didn't earn this year, I minus the income. This is why we have to adjust. This, is, this chapter is all about these adjustments. Okay, uh, cut the video. The last, before we close the whole account, okay, this is the last set of journal entry. Now, let's take some time to understand. Now we are at the end of the year. We have already gotten the money, the money already settled. So now let's settle the receive in advance 4,000. So, this receive in advance 4,000, it means, what does it mean? Yes, we receive the money in advance. Now, do you understand that the receipt in advance of 4,000, here, this $4,000, ah, where is this 4,000? This 4,000 is inside these two things. You understand, ah? It's inside these two things. But, we all concluded, did you earn this 4,000 this year? If you never earn 4,000 this year, you don't record it as income. And do you understand why this entry now? Why, why this entry? Because we minus the income. Why? Why minus the income? Because this 4,000, you did not earn it this year. You earn it next year. You earn it next year. That's why you de de uh, debit the tuition fee income. You minus the income. And where does it go to? It goes to into this account called tuition fee income received in advance. Okay? The services you did not provide this year, you only provide next year, which means that this year you did not earn the income yet. You did not earn the 4,000 yet. That's why you have to minus away the income. You have to debit the income. Why? Because this 4,000, you already put it inside here. Okay? So there's two things. One is the beginning of the year. You did not earn it this year. You earned it in the previous year. That's why we debit the income. For this last thing, do you earn it this year? No, you did not earn it this year. You earn it next year. That's why you also minus from the income this year. Everyone clear? Can I? Okay. So you have these entries. Now, for the last entries, you always have to do the closing entries. Now, what does closing entry mean? It means that all of this tuition fee income, can you just tell me what is the income that I earned this year? How do you do that? 
89,000 plus 5,000 minus 2,500 and minus 4,000. That is the total income that you get this year. Okay? And that is why when you do the closing entries, you will always close to income summary. Okay? You will minus all the income that you have. Now, how did I get this 87,500? I got it because these two plus together minus this, minus this. Okay, and then I will put it into income summary, which is your statement of financial performance. Of this part of the journal entries, I just want to explain all over again what is going on in this question. Okay, what is going on? Okay, what is going on is very simple. Now I'm gonna use this green color uh, marker, okay, to elaborate, to recap, to consolidate our understanding. Okay, in short, this year you receive eight nine zero 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 and five thousand. This is by check. This is by cash. Everyone agree? Given by the question, right? Everyone agree, right? Now the problem is this. Out of this money here, 2,500 you, that you received this year is not earned this year. This was earned in the previous year. So if you go and put all of this as your income, it is fake reporting. Because out of this money, 2,500 should be here. It is earned in the previous year. That is why you minus 2,500. Everyone so far? Now, out of this money that you receive, what about this receive in advance 4,000? What does it mean? It means that out of this money that you receive here, you receive $4,000 already, but the services have not been provided. It has not occurred yet. It will only occur in the next financial year. So you have to minus away this 4,000 because you did not earn it this year. This is the reason for these entries and these entries you are adjusting okay so right now i just want to clarify when do the adjustments happen it happens either at the start of the year or the end of the year okay and the title of the, the statement which is statement of financial performance for the year ended 31st march 2019 and uh, as usual the title is already in the question so you just copy down, right? Statement of financial performance for the year ended 31st March 2019. Now, this is not the whole statement. This is only a part of the statement. And that's why I need you to write in this word, extract. Extract means what? Uh, it's a small part of it. Okay, I think you all do SS, you all do humans. Uh, when they give you a passage, they say it is an extract from somewhere. It is a small part. Extract, okay? Now, so for your financial performance statement, okay, you will have tuition fee income 87500 because this is the amount that you close to the income summary. Okay, what about the statement of financial position? Okay, statement of financial position is as usual, okay, name of the business followed by the statement title. Okay, and then you have this thing called current liabilities. Tuition fee income received in advance, 4000 Why is it under current liabilities? Because in the beginning of the lesson, we already talked about it. What is tuition fee income? What is income received in advance? Current liabilities. Now, why is it current liabilities? Liabilities means you owe customers something. Why is it current liabilities? Because you take their money already, but you haven't given them the tuition services. That's why you owe them the tuition services. That's why it is liability. Now, some people will ask, Oh, Mr. Lee, I think you missed out something. Where is the current asset? Where is the tuition fee receivable? Now, the tuition fee receivable is gone. Why is it gone? Because during the year, when you receive the money, 2500, the receivable is gone. Why would the customer still owe you money? That's why the account is no more. The customer already give you back the 2500 The account is no more. So how I like to remember it is, at the start of the year, whatever account at the start of the year, 
is confirm gone. But the account at the end of the year is still there. Is that? Okay? effects on the profit for the year and current liabilities if the tuition fee income received in advance was not adjusted. Let's talk about one thing at a time. Let's talk about profit for the year first. Okay, now, this is my income for the year. Right? Now, they are asking you, what if you don't adjust the receipt in advance? The 4000 What if you don't adjust? What will your revenue be? If you don't adjust, if you don't minus this 4,000, if you don't adjust, what will your income be? It will go up by 4,000, right? Okay, it will be 91,500. Now, if your income goes up by 4,000, what happens to your profit? It will also rise, right? It will also increase by 4,000. Now, is this the correct way? No, uh, okay, so if you never adjust, what will happen to your profit for the year? Your profit for the year will be overstated by 4,000. This is the answer that I'm looking for, the effect and the value. Everyone clear about this. If you don't adjust, if you don't deduct this 4,000 and you record it as income that you earned this year, even though you should not, okay? The green color one is the correct one. But if you never adjust, your revenue will become 91,500, right? You never minus mark, so it becomes 91,500. And this revenue will become your profit. If your revenue increased by 4,000, your profit will increase by 4,000. So it is over. It's overstated. You overstate your profit. Okay, so it is wrong. Okay, now what happens to your current liabilities? Now, if you don't have, if you never adjust for receiving advance, you don't even have this account. If you don't have this account, do you realize that if you don't have this account, this account will not be here. Your current liabilities is over or understated? Understated. Yes. Your current liabilities will be under stated by 4,000. Can you copy this into your worksheet? Okay, now why, why is that so? Because if you never adjust, your whole statement here, this one, it will be gone. It will be gone. Means that you never even create the account at all. It should be there, but you never create. So do you see that current liability is understated? You understate. It should be 4,000. But you, if you never create an account, the 4,000 is not inside. You have understated your current liabilities by 4,000. Okay? So always remember, when this kind of effects question come out, tell me the effect and tell me the value. Normally the value is just whatever the value the question tells you. Okay? The value got no problem. It's the effect that you need to understand. Okay?